Hi everyone. So it's eventually going to end when you're going through your degree. If you're doing well and you actually are heading for graduation, graduation will come. And guess what? You're going to need to get a job. So today's video is how to get a job with an information technology degree. So the first piece of advice is apply everywhere and anywhere. So that means a lot of things. First, be willing to move. To apply locally, I would say maybe focus that more strongly if you really don't care where you end up working as far as actual location. Because if you are a local, it's easier to interview you so you stand a little bit better of a chance. But there's also a lot more jobs in the entire United States than the city that you live in or the state that you live in. So apply everywhere if you can and if you're okay with moving or if you're okay with staying where you are. So another thing I mean by that is there are a lot of companies that need IT people. There's a small company called Publix back where I came from, and they hire quite a few IT people. Most of these companies have corporate offices, and some of the more state-based you know, companies are going to need IT people for a lot of different things. Now, your local McDonald's probably doesn't need an IT person, but McDonald's corporate headquarters certainly does. So look these companies up, go to their corporate website, and try applying there. It may not be posted on Google, Go to the corporate website, that's a better way to find jobs that not everybody is, is hitting all the time and you have a million people competing with you. Okay, so beware of predatory companies. Now, what I'm talking about is there are companies out there, one I know is called Reviture, another is called Launch Code, and they will pretty much call you immediately if you apply to them. Beware other locations, you know, I'm talking about in Orlando, other areas have different companies that do this. I've seen different ones up here in Maryland. So what they do is they call you pretty much immediately and want to interview you. Now what they'll tell you a certain amount of the way in is that what they want to do is kind of put you in a dorm and put you through a code boot camp. Once you get through that boot camp, what they're going to do is contract you out as a temp to other companies and pay you not nearly as much as you're worth with the job you're doing. Now, this isn't actually the worst way to go for everyone. There are some people that get out of the degree and they don't really have any specific skills that they're willing to put on their resume. They kind of just, you know, crawled through the class, didn't really learn anything. Not sure how that really happens, but for whatever reason, it might be a better route than help desk for the long term because in help desk you can end up just getting stuck there and not actually being able to move up because all you're doing is taking phone calls and reading KB articles. Here, this does at least give you the opportunity to get some experience on your resume and move up after that period is done, which that period I think can be uh, you know, up to five years in some cases. So that's a lot of your life where you're getting paid you know, very low wages, not too much above minimum perhaps, and you're not really making that much money. So be careful with these companies. It's really enticing. One thing they do is they post their company as a different, kind of a different name, saying, oh, you can work for this company. And what they're really saying is, we contract you to this company. And it's so enticing because you're probably looking at your phone every 10 minutes, just waiting for a phone call. And when you actually get someone calling you who's enthusiastic, who wants to talk to you and interview you, it's so easy to just want to jump in. Just keep in mind with these things, you know, it's definitely okay to do the interview or whatever you want to do, but you have the option to not do it. And if you have actual skills, whether that be for an, from an internship or from doing personal projects, if you can actually show that you can do something in some way, you can most likely do better than this. Now, if you don't feel like you have anything like that, it might not be the worst thing for you long term, but realize you're going to be living like a college student for quite a bit longer if you do that. So that brings me to the next thing, which is find the jobs that you have the skills for. Don't just search IT jobs this area. Don't just search IT jobs. If you have a particular skill, say you got good at MongoDB, search MongoDB database admin jobs or MongoDB jobs. That is a better way to look for a job than searching information technology jobs. Search for jobs with the keyword of the skill that you know. And another tip I have is put junior in front of it and see if you find anything because you may be a little bit inundated with specific skills when you search them with 
people that want a lot of experience, right? So another thing I can say about experience, just really quickly, is you can definitely get a job that you have less than what they say is required for experience, especially if it's in a specific skill. So apply to those jobs that you actually have specific skills for, and don't be afraid to say you know it if you've done it. So the next thing is you need to build your resume. If you don't have a resume, you need to start one. If your resume is not very good or doesn't reflect the actual experience you have up until this point, you need to update it, get it better. So the first thing I can recommend is pretty much every university while you're a student there has a service that will help you to write a resume. Now, this is really not the best way to go, but it's a very good start, especially if you have nothing. What I really recommend you do is go to a tech company's resume review. Now, these happen, tech companies like Microsoft will go around and do what they call resume reviews. And that's where they will look at your resume and give you tips on it. Now, there's something in it for them too, right? Because they actually will hire some people that they look at your resume and they see that you know you have some skills that they actually kind of like, so they'll give you an interview. I don't know how many people actually get jobs out of those things. I know that some people do, but this is really more about your resume, right? So go there and the first thing they're most likely gonna ask you is what you're into, what you've been doing, and just start talking to them about that because they're gonna listen to you and then look at your resume and help you to better tailor it for what you're into. So that is what I did and there were things I had done that I did not consider resume worthy and they were very much resume worthy. So they helped me quite a bit. And I recommend that you go to something like that if you can. If not, just get the resume service at the university to help you out. You know, watch, maybe I'll do a YouTube video on how to build a good tech resume. I don't see myself as an expert, but I've gotten a lot better at it, you know, as I went through my degree. So the next thing to do is actually tailor your resume to the jobs you're applying for. Now, if you have a specific skill in mind, you probably won't have to do as much of this, but there are a lot of people that there's quite a few things they like and a few things they could see themselves doing. So if that's the case, make sure that you have different versions of your resume maybe, or if you really want to go into it, you can actually change your resume for each job that you apply to. That's because a lot of companies, they don't just have people manually read your resume. They actually have a computer read it for keywords. So there are going to be certain keywords, certain skills that if they don't see those, that text basically in your resume, you're just not ever gonna be seen by anyone. So it might be worth it to tailor your resume. Now, yes, this does slow you down, so you have to kind of weigh the pros and cons of that. So another thing I will tell you is apply before you graduate. Now, when you're looking for full-time jobs, you don't want it to be too much before you graduate, but if you're starting in your last semester, now might be a good time. A lot of companies know that you're graduating because they've read your resume, right? So they know if they called you that you're not gonna be able to start work right away. And truth is, even if they didn't know that, it makes for some free interview experience, right? It's never a bad thing to go through something like this, even if it doesn't end in a job. So start applying when you're in your last semester and put that on your resume, what you can do is actually put your graduation date as the future date when you're gonna graduate. They'll know what that means. And if they're willing to take someone who is not you know, able to start right away, they'll call you and then you can move on from there. So the next thing I'm gonna tell you to do is to kind of accept the level that you're at, especially if you've already graduated and you really need to start finding something because Trying to get a job where you don't have requisite skills generally doesn't work out. So if there's nothing that you can find with the skills that you have, or maybe you don't feel like you have any skills, then you might have to take something like a help desk job. Now the problem is these jobs don't pay very well, but they are better than no job. And just because you take a job doesn't mean that you're there forever, right? You can then take that time to gain experience and when you have a little bit, you can find a higher paying job. The degree doesn't go away just because you did it a year or two years or three years ago. The only way it will do that is if you have a job gap. If you have a job gap, that actually will make it harder for you to find a job. Companies look at that and they wanna know what you were doing in that time. It makes you look unmotivated. If you were working at a company and you have the degree, 
now you not only have a degree, but you have experience and no job gap. So what I'm saying is you might have to take something that perhaps you didn't really want that low of a salary. Maybe it wasn't what you wanted to do. You have to find a point to settle. So one thing that might happen to you is you might get an email back from a company, then they want you to take an online coding test. Now it's fine to do this. All I'm trying to say here is don't think that that really gets you that much closer to the job. Don't get excited. Definitely don't make plans because they can send these things to as many people as they want. Now definitely take it, do your best. It really can't hurt. All I'm trying to say is it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to get anything, you know, so much more than it, it meant that when you actually applied because they just send them out to everyone. So one thing that does actually mean something could be moving forward is a phone interview. And most phone interviews I've done have moved to at least another level after that. A phone interview means an actual person is talking to you and interested in you. If somebody at that company is taking their time to talk to you, then that's a good sign and you might have a real lead here. Now, one thing I recommend is in a phone interview, they're mostly going to ask you about yourself. There's not a lot of technical stuff you can do in a phone interview, though I have done it before. So the first interview is probably mostly going to be about you. So what I recommend you do before a phone interview is kind of sit down and reflect and think about what you've done to get to the point that you're at. Definitely think about personal projects you've done, things that you're interested in that correlate with the job, things like that, because they're going to want to hear that and they may not actually tell you that that's what they want to hear when they ask about you. But they say, when, you know, when they ask, you know, what do you do in your spare time? They don't want to hear you say, I play video games all day, right? They want to hear what you do that correlates with the job in your spare time. So have some of that kind of stuff prepared. Be honest about it. Don't make things up. But there's almost certainly, you know, if you're interested in this thing, something you've done in your spare time that correlates with it. So be ready for that and then have a good attitude and don't get too nervous when the phone rings. So my final piece of advice is just to not give up. I know it's hard and I know a lot of times you apply to a whole ton of companies and you don't get anything back. You might consider changing your strategy a little bit, but definitely don't throw in the towel. There are things out there. It may feel like there's not because just like maybe your phone's dead or something, nobody calls you, but keep trying, you'll get something. So if you like this video, please give it a like. If you like this channel, please subscribe. It really helps me out. Uh, making this content is something I do in my spare time. I don't get paid anything for this and I hope you guys enjoy it. Have a good night.